What a buildup we've had. Two unusually entertaining and unexpectedly entertaining undercard fights. Fascinating conversations with both of the participants in the main event. Constant conversation about the personality similarities and the career contrasts between the great Marco Antonio Barrera and the hoping to prove he's great Juan Manuel Marquez. Let's get ready for the main event. Pride, courage, honor, hallmarks of the Mexican fighting spirit. For more than a decade, these principles forged a path to the signature victories of Marco Antonio Barrera's storied career. From his rousing war with Kennedy McKinney, to his precise dismantling of Nassim Hamed, and his pair of wins over Eric Morales in one of boxing's epic trilogies. A raging passion that'll savagely trade until the final bell. By any measure, Barrera stands tall in the pantheon of Mexican greats. His countryman, Juan Manuel Marquez, stands on the outside looking in. At age 33, the supremely talented Marquez has yet to fully establish a legacy of his own. Three years ago, his first opportunity came and nearly went in round one against Manny Pacquiao. And he fires the straight left hand, and there's the punching power. Juan Manuel Marquez hasn't ever seen anything like that. Three times, Marquez got up off the canvas, fighting back to salvage an improbable draw. Fire against fire! What a battle! And also proving that within his chest beats a purely Mexican heart. Tonight, Marquez has a second chance to define his career once and for all. If he fails, it could mean yet another legendary night for one of boxing's all-time greats. Mexican pride, Mexican courage, Mexican honor. Marco Antonio Barrera versus Juan Manuel Marquez, next. It's finally time for our main event. Marco Antonio Barrera against Juan Manuel Marquez. Both fighters have promised an old school Mexican war, but will it play out that way? We're about to find out just 10 minutes from now. Barrera versus Marquez is being brought to you by Mandalay Bay, boxing at its best. Rockstar energy drink, party like a rock star. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment Brought to you by HBO. When people write Marco Antonio Barrera off, he always seems to come back with stirring performances. However, as the favorite, Barrera sometimes struggles. Think about his difficulties with Junior Jones, Manny Pacquiao, and Rocky Juarez the first time around. Tonight, Barrera will have to guard against that favored feeling. Against this man, Juan Manuel Marquez. Marquez has everything to prove tonight and could fight like a man possessed with the fury of a career filled with disappointments and missed opportunities. And we bring you back live to ringside with the brilliant Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel, there was a moment in Marco Antonio's uh, early career when he was all but an all-out Mexican brawler. I mean, a guy who came at you physically and buried you with that left hook to the body. And then, after his two losses to Junior Jones, he began making adjustments, and that peaked with his dismantling of Prince Nassim Hamed as a truly technical boxer. And then his last performance against Rocky Juarez, he once again went out and did a thorough paint job as a boxer. Now he says he's going to revert to the form of the brawler that once he was. He's going to go in and fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with Juan Manuel Marquez to win this fight. Must he revert to that style to beat a boxer as good as Marquez? And can he, at this advanced stage of his career, really do it? I don't know if he must. The one thing that it says to me, though, Jim, he has a lot of respect for Juan Manuel Marquez. I mean, the fact that he's going to he feel that he can't outbox and be technical with this guy, which he's been able to do back and forth with all of the other guys. He feels that he has to come out and try to fight a war. And if he does that, we're going to end up with a good fight on our hands because 
Marquez is not the type of guy that's going to take the boxing role and move around and try to stay away from him. He also is going to stay in toe to toe if he's forced to. So if Barrera comes out to fight that way, it's going to be a very exciting fight because both guys have the ability to box and to slug if they have to. And they've shown that in the past. Do you think that Marquez, even though slightly older, because he hasn't had all those wars the way Barrera has, is maybe the more physically gifted fighter at this moment in his career? Yes, even though Marquez may be on paper older, it's still uh, to me and most of the boxer where we look at him as the younger fighter because he hasn't been in all those epic, great, brutal fights that Barrera has been into. Well, that, that makes sense because Barrera's had as many big fights and as many big moments as anybody in the history of the sport. And Larry Merchant, on the other hand, Juan Manuel Marquez has had a career marked by frustrations, marked by feeling left out, sometimes left out by his own unfortunate choices. Can he reverse all that in one night with one big, defiant, and defining performance? After 14 years, you'd think not. But boxing is a funny old world. <laughs> During much of his career, Marquez has been overshadowed by more crowd-pleasing fighters. Barrera, Morales, Pacquiao, even Prince Nassim. And then he contributed to his own shadowy stature by falling just short in a few fights just by not giving his best when he had to somehow it, he hasn't been able to make it happen but now just a year after blowing his title for thirty thousand dollars he's getting a million and a half dollar purse and a chance to be the last man standing Will he seize the opportunity, Jim, or will it seize him? Well, it's interesting to, to look at it this way. From Mexico City to Mars, from Michigan to Morocco, we talk about pound for pound in this sport. Brains per pound, there may never have been a smarter fight. Pale of the tape for Marco Antonio Barrera and Juan Manuel Marquez. Within a few months of each other at age 33, a one-inch height advantage for Marquez. A half-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist for Barrera. Marquez, who has spent most of his career at lower weight classes, weighed in one pound short of the 130-pound limit. Barrera, who's been fighting in this weight class for the past few years, was right on the 130-pound mark. Tonight, Marquez unofficially weighs one pound more. That is as dead equal a tail of the tape as you're ever likely to see. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Marco Antonio Barrera, one Manuel Marquez fight, is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! Juan Manuel Marquez, a former government accountant, a precise, measured thinker, a man whose heart is on the line tonight. We found out that he could be a different kind of fighter than a studied boxer after he was knocked down three times in the first round by Manny Pacquiao. Out of desperation, he showed us there was more to him than we knew. He was more than an accountant in the ring. Was that the transforming experience for Marquez Manny, having to fight fire with fire against Pacquiao? Well, that's what I found out then, how tough he was inside, because he actually didn't get up and just outbox Pacquiao. He actually outfought him all the way down the line. And I think that's what has made him so popular to some degree with the Mexican crowd here tonight, because he is such a great performance against Pacquiao, and a lot of the Mexican fans are remembering Barrera's defeat and the shock when he lost to Pacquiao. A few days ago, he was an underdog by six or seven to five. The last we checked, it's an even money fight, meaning the late money, the smart money perhaps, has come in on Marquez. And if there was any question whether Marquez had a following, that walk-in showed you that he did. But chances are Barrera still has the larger following because by far he has had the larger career. In fact, as large a career as that of any active fighter. He's been in one drama after another. 
He has endured. He's come back not only from defeats, but victories. He's had one or two different reincarnations as a fighter. He is, to me, what a true professional, outstanding fighter is all about. With Ricky Hatton behind his right shoulder and Emmanuel Stewart, if this becomes a fight of technical adjustments, is this not the most proven adjuster in the sport? He has been the most adjustable fighter that I ever saw, especially when we go back to the beginning of his career when he first came to America. He was known as the baby assassin, nothing but an aggressive slugger, and then became a technical fighter. And then when it became necessary, he went back to boxing, slugging, and doing everything. And that's over a long period of time for a young, a, a fighter his size, I mean, it's unusual to see a small fighter have the longevity that he has. Maybe with a Lord Foreman or something like that, but not with a small fighter. And still fighting at the top of his game. The unbelievable trilogy against Eric Morales, the first ever boxing after dark performance against Kennedy McKinney, the blood curdling loss to Manny Pacquiao, followed by the amazing comeback. Prior to that, the amazing dismantling of Prince Nassim Hamed, which in effect ended the career of a rising sensation. Marco Antonio Barrera steps into the ring one more time. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, Nevada, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and Romanza Boxing are proud to present the main event of the evening, 12 Rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Rockstar Energy Drink. Partied like a rock star. Cerveza Tecate, tu ganaste. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of America. And De La Hoya versus Mayweather live on HBO Pay-Per-View Saturday, May 5th. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman, Dr. Tony Alamo, Executive Director, Keith Kaiser, and the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system are Patricia Morse Jarman, Paul Smith, and Doug Tucker. And inside the ring, the man in charge of the action working for the 113th time as a referee in a title bout, Jay Nady. And now, for the thousands in attendance here at the Mandalay Bay and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with white, official weight, 129 pounds, professional record, 46 victories, including 35 knockouts, with only three defeats and one bout even. De Ciudad de Mexico, the former featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Dinamita. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver, official weight, 130 pounds. Professional record, 63 victories, including 42 knockouts with four defeats, one no decision. También de Ciudad de Mexico, the three-time world champion, the reigning, defending WBC super featherweight champion of the world. The baby faced assassin Marco Antonio Barrera. <laughs> Just 
Do we have any questions? Okay. Obey my commands. Good luck, touch those guys, and let's come out and go to work. Is it too early, Jim and Emmanuel, to demand a rematch? <laughs> <laughs> of a fight which could have taken place in 1999. In other words, you're anticipating <laughs> a great fight tonight. I'm anticipating a battle, yes. The roar is one of expectation and fulfillment. A crowd which knows that this has been a fight waiting for years in the making. Two technical boxers of great skill with warrior hearts who can be expected in this opening round to try to figure out what the other man wants to do. Both fighters working early with their left hands, hooking and yeah. jabbing. Fireworks are going right away, and both guys are punching not only fast, but they're powerful shots, very well placed. Nothing is sloppy, and it's going to be like this throughout the entire fight. Herrera throwing his left hook right under Marquez's heart. Marquez working upstairs using slightly greater height. Both guys are good counter punches, on, in addition to being good all the way around fighters. Both counter punch very well. Both can lead or counter. Yes. Both can box or punch. Hard right hand by Marquez. Herrera says, I'll throw a hard right hand, too. I don't think I've seen a fighter since Sugar Ray Leonard who responds to a punch as quickly as Herrera does. And a lot of time, Larry, Herrera looks like he's getting hit. When he doesn't, he has a great way of rolling and taking effective punches away. And that's why he's been through a lot of those fights without getting hit clean when people think he's getting hit. And he doesn't take all of the punishment that people think he's taking. Right now, Herrera's left jab is beating Marquez to the punch. There's a heart-stopping intensity in this confrontation. So much on the line, you can feel it in the minds of both fighters. And you wonder if Marquez won't be a tiny bit too anxious against the big fight mentality of Herrera, who's been here so many times before. Good one-two inside by Barrera. Marquez countered with a quick left hook. This time, Marquez leads with the left hook. This fight is going to be very, right very special. Hand upstairs by Barrera. Both guys are punching extremely hard and extremely sharp and accurate. I mean, no one can make any mistake at all. One mistake in this fight could turn it and be over it in one second. Well, not terribly surprisingly, round one feels like Barrera Morales four. It's very similar to what we saw in those three fights. I think a, well, a little bit more accurate punching power, I think, from Marquez and even uh, at the time, Morales. And Eric was able yeah, to show. Yeah. This stuff, this is world class stuff, this first round. Right there, you saw Barrera look like he got hit with a solid right, but he rolled his head and took most of the power out of it. And landed a telling left yeah. hand to the body. Both fighters got in some shots. We're in, we're in. Very well. You're doing real good, no problem. All right, close your eyes now. All right, don't, don't, don't go into him. Relax. Well, you got to work more that left. Work that left. Come in with that left. You got to counter punch him upstairs. When he throws, you counter punch. Right here, you see Marquez in a sweeping right hand on the rail right there. And Barrera got hit with the punch. And if he keeps getting hit with those type punches, it can have a big effect. But he rolled half of that steam off of it still. But it's good right hand. Combi box numbers in round one. Barrera 18 out of 47. Marquez 20 out of 62. Barrera at a slightly higher percentage. Marquez throwing just a little bit more. 
Barrera landed 13 power shots. Marquez landed 14 power shots. In other words, little or nothing to choose between the two fighters. To the degree that anyone was the aggressor, Marquez seemed to want to get off his shots a little bit more, but Barrera was choosing, picking his spots, and landing just as hard. And there you saw that Barrera ability to slip the punch by rolling his chin away from the impact. Barrera stepping inside of Marquez right, and banging away to the body with a left hook. Barrera looks very sharp and very fast, much even faster than I even expected. Barrera trained for 10 weeks at altitude in Big Bear, California. He compared this training camp to his training camps for Prince Nassim Hamed and for the third Eric Morales fight, which he said were the other two hardest training camps of his career. And he's working very good with a counter left hook whenever Marquez comes in. Sometimes he throws the left hook to the body because Marquez has a tendency to bend over to his right when he comes in. And Barrera's trying to take advantage of it by shooting left uppercuts and left counter hooks. In this round, Barrera has begun to force Marquez to miss just a little bit more than in round one. Stepping inside of Marquez's shots, countering to the body. I think that uh, Barrera has adjusted what he wanted to do by being the aggressor because he found... Big left hook by Barrera upstairs. Sees the opportunity and goes at him again. He found, Jim, that he can out... He's outboxing Marquez. He's beating him to the punch, which, which may be a surprise to both of them right now. There's a left hook to the body getting back with Marquez the left counters top. with two left hooks of his own. But you're right, Larry. It is Barrera who's beating his man to the punch more frequently than the opposite. Stop! Barrera fires a straight right hand. Not a punch he'll use all that often. Good left hook to the body inside by Barrera while Marquez tries to work upstairs, and Mark Antonio ducks the big stuff. Barrera sticking the jab and still beating Juan Manuel to the punch here in round number two. I have the feeling, Emmanuel, that Barrera is the more relaxed fighter. More relaxed, and I'm, I'm just amazed by the hand speed that he has. I don't think I've ever saw him faster with his hand speed than he is now. Barrera making Marquez reach and then stepping Look inside and tattooing him with hard shots. That was a perfect right hand shot over the top. Marquez missing and missing again. Barrera had a very good round, too. It looks sensational in the round to me. Good. You see that one, two, three? That's it. Well done. Well done. Well done. But don't bring your guard down. Your hands up. Your hands up. Uh, show her resistance also. Good. Upper and hook on the left, on the right. Barrera's left hooks has given a lot of problems to Marquez. And he's mixing up the left hooks. He's doing body punches and punches to the head, all with the left hook. Through all of his career, he's had one of the better left hooks in the business, particularly the body, but in recent years more frequently and increasingly to the head. Power shots in round two. Barrera 14 out of 30. Marquez 11 out of 38. Barrera also winning the jabbing contest. 8 out of 27 to 3 out of 24. Barrera. These rounds are going to be close. Barrera's doing everything. He's using upper body movement, a little half a step back, in and out to keep him off balance. Actually mixing up jabs with his attack. And then counter punch is very effective also. Once again, he made Marquez overreach, stepped inside and landed a body shot. Now Marquez lands a big left hook. Barrera lands a right hand in return. Marco beginning to pick off punches with his gloves now. Seeing it coming just a little bit. Good left Beautiful hook upstairs by Marquez. Right to the body, left hook upstairs. There's one thing about these Wales trained fighters. They all use the finish up with right hands, followed up with left hooks. Whether it's a hook to the body or a hook on the chin. 
The entire fight has been in the center of the ring. There's been nothing even remotely close to a clinch. This is what we're going to see all night long. Technical skill at its highest level. Marquez landed a body shot, missed big with the left hook. No way. Herrera sticks the jab again, sticks the jab again, sticks the jab again. Herrera brilliant at finding that middle beat in your pattern to hit you with his jab. Just when you don't think it's coming, it comes out like a telescope. He's made the transition from being a, a baby-faced assassin to a grizzled sharpshooter. He's mixing up his everything right now, boxing good. And fight with Marquez, who I think may be still for 126 pounds the best in the world. It, 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 you can't make any mistakes. And both guys are doing a variety of things. And I think as the fight goes on, it's going to be much more intense. Like this. Yeah. And you can't beat the shepherd. Just not just throwing punches, but power, accurate, pinpoint punches. Herrera's got a strange jab. It looks a little awkward the way he does it. But it, but he, he catches you because it's an off-beat type jab. Absolutely. He finds that yeah. middle beat in yeah. the rhythm. Yeah. There were brilliant moments in that round for both fighters. Where's the ice? You're doing good. Juan, don't bring your head up. Because you can move your head off to the side and make a miss. Good job. Feeling with yourself with confidence. You're doing real good. You're doing it. Right here, you see one of the characteristics that has made Barrera such a great fighter. Anytime he gets hit with anything, he always comes back with punches. I'm looking at the three judges at ringside. Doug Tucker, Patricia Jarman, Paul Smith. What a tough job, job tonight. This is going to be a test of every judge's security. Did I pick the right man? That <laughs> round was close. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I got to tell you, I think the guy's just in control of this fight. He's landing a cleaner, harder shots when he has to. He's at the top of his game. He seems to be... The utmost of confidence coming forward. He's the aggressor. Marquez, on the other hand, always a slow starter. I re you know, he started to turn it on in the third round, made it close. I guess he's going to turn it on around four, five, and six, because that's how Juan Manuel, Juan Manuel fights. Three to nothing, Barrera. It would be fascinating to know if any of the official scores were secure enough to score the first three rounds all for the same man. It's not easy when rounds are this close. So one thing that Marquez does not want the to get going for this is jab, because once the runner gets his jab to go on, he sets up a lot of different combinations off of that. And he can mess up your rhythm, because once again, he has an off-rhythm jab. He throws yeah, it at the yeah. moment when you're not expecting it. Exactly. A lot of guys when they jab and take a big step and you can time and feel the jab coming. He doesn't do that. He just pushes it out from when he looked like he's in a position where he can't jab, he'll jab. And if you throw a right hand over, he turns his head enough to break it where you can't even count all this jab. And he has a brilliant ability to catch you at the moment when you want to come forward with his jab. Yeah. So he's shown all of that in the first three rounds. And Marquez shows the intensity of someone who wants to stay on the attack and keep the pressure up. Body shot by Marquez. He may try to do more of that as time goes on. Barrera is the one with the body punching stock in past fights. Yeah. But Marquez seems like he's trying to get in position to land a good right hand. And as he gets closer to Barrera, he might catch Barrera with that right hand because Barrera won't have enough room to roll it off if the fight goes on. Uppercut by Barrera. This is a tactical round four. 
Herrera seems to have confidence at this point that he can win the boxing match and is confident enough to fight in a tactical fashion. Some thought that he might go to war more so because Marquez is such a skilled boxer. That was a potential low blow call against Marquez. And Barrera steps forward with a perfect one, too. Well, he's steps getting away from the pawing right. He's getting his jab rhythm to go in now. Once he gets set to go in, it's all over with. Marquez is still punching very short, active power punches. And in particular, I'm watching his right hand. Even though he hasn't been that effective, I'm just seeing it look like that's the shot that he was, he's really gambling on a lot. But in terms of solid connects, Marco Antonio Barrera is being the boss once again in round four. And the crowd rises to appreciate the intensity of this war. How are you feeling? Feeling well? Bring your left or your right arm a little bit. The hook and the upper, you haven't thrown the upper. Okay. You're good? Okay. All right, jab, 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 and when you have him, set him up. Hook, hook to the body. Okay. Right here, you see Marquez landing, which I think is the punch that he's gambling on to win this fight for the most. It's that right hand, and I, it seemed like he's trying to get himself in position to land that punch more than any other punch tonight. Through round four, average jabs per round. Herrera landing nine of 28. It feels like more. Marquez, five out of 25. Harold Letterman gives a round to Marquez for the first time in the fight. And as we mentioned, the official scores tonight, Paul Smith, Doug Tucker, and Patricia Jarman with a difficult job on their hands. Remember, many times watching rounds in Barrera's fights with Morales and wondering, how could you choose between these two men? Yeah. They score and score and score. You know, Barrera has that ability because he, he you know, he every time he gets hit with a punch, he retaliates right away. So it's hard for a judge to keep up with the score. Exactly right, uh, Emmanuel. That he doesn't give the opponent or the judges a chance to think that things are not going, that things are going against him. But Marquez is fighting an extremely determined fight. I see a man, I'm looking at his face. He is determined to fight the fight of his life also tonight. And, it, and I think going down the stretch, when neither guy feels that they're comfortable ahead on the scorecards, you're going to see everything go to another level. Marquez has landed one sharp right hand in this round. There's a solid left hook upstairs for Marquez. Herrera a little bit less active now. That jab not coming out as frequently as it did in no. rounds three and four. I wonder if Barrera is thinking Marquez really doesn't like to be coming forward this way. I'm making him uncomfortable because he really hasn't attacked him very often. See, or is it simply that Barrera has fallen increasingly into this pattern later in his career? This well, is the way he fought Juarez in the last fight. This is a tit-for-tat fight. Big uppercut for Marquez. You heard Nacho Answer. Beristain yeah. asking him to throw the uppercut. And he hadn't done so before. And Barrera ah. came right back with a combination, even though he didn't land, but he fired right back. Left hook for Barrera. Marquez flailing and reaching to try to land something in return for that. They both have the same instinct for trying to hit back. Crowd oohed and out on the left hook, but Marquez found mostly air. Herrera beginning to stick the jab again. Good left hook inside by Barrera. Good counter left hook. Marquez missing with a long right hand. Barrera sticks the jab, yep. sticks the jab, yeah. sticks the jab, moves in a radial circle. Marquez with a big left hook. Barrera fired back and missed. Solid shots in that round for Juan Manuel Marquez. 
Come on, work, you're working with your guard down. You're working with your guard down. Bring it up. Come on, stand up straight. Come on, work it. Throw more punches. Throw more punches. Choose the combinations, get the combinations, move, get the combinations, and pressure him. Our shots in round five, according to CompuBox, Barrera seven out of 20, Marquez 17 out of 36. So a big edge in power connects in the fifth round for Juan Manuel Marquez. Ah! Fight seems to be tightening up on the scorecards, or at least on the card of Harold Letterman. We saw a sign that said cut caused by punch. I'm looking for the cut. It may be a small nick outside the left eye of Juan Manuel Marquez. Left hook for Marquez. Bangs Barrera back against the ropes. It's one of the first times all night that a fighter has had his back against the ropes. I see Barrera in his body language now is looking to attack. Barrera holding his hands a little higher, coming forward more than before. And he holds his hands higher, often he jabs more. And he sticks the jab twice there as Marquez misses over the top. Mar Marquez is shooting everything with power. Where Barrera mixes up here, so he'll relax, box a little bit, then he'll tighten up. Everything Marquez does has got knockout written on it. Barrera steps through the clinch and tries for a big uppercut, then dodges a left hand from Marquez. Barrera going to the body. Marquez going to the body. Left hook upstairs landed for Marquez. Barrera trying to counter with a left hook right away. Marquez leaned in on a left. Another big right hand for Barrera. Hot shotting Marquez and trying to find that spot around the eye where already a small cut has been called. Marquez leaning in to throw the left hook to the body. Barrera sticks the jab to push him back. Hard right hand lead by Juan Manuel Marquez. Now Barrera comes back and fires to the body and upstairs with a right hand. had a much more aggressive round here, seeming to understand that he allowed Marquez to be the aggressor in the last round. Now Nady warns Barrera about using his head. I don't see where no one is doing anything. It's just a good fight at this stage, but, you know, that's, that's the referee's call. But it's what's interesting right now, Barrera's trying to throw right-hand leads. They trade combinations in the center of the ring, and both men land. A fight breaks out in the middle of the boxing mat, and the crowd goes nuts. Come on, when you go in, you hug him when you need the inside. You got the Vaseline mixed. How is it, Nacho? March 26, it's a replay of Costas Now. If you missed it, the show's entirely devoted to college athletics. Check out the profile of Duke basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski. Also that night, it's the premiere of the HBO sports documentary, The UCLA Dynasty. A look at the dominant college basketball team of all time, the UCLA Bruins from 1964 through 1975, 10 championships in 12 years.
Come on, more punches. Where are you? More punches, harder punches. Let him see it. Let him see it that you are the man, that you reign. Come on, you're letting him lead. He's going to come to you now. First week into the final four in Las Vegas, casinos and sports books jammed with betters. Many of them pouring into this arena to take a break from the basketball and catch a great boxing match between Marco Antonio Barrera and Juan Manuel Marquez. Power numbers in the sixth round. Barrera, 13 out of 32, a higher percentage rate. Marquez, 14 out of 42, throwing more. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? I'll give you 58, 56, four rounds to two. Marco Antonio Barrera. You know, Jim, you know, he just doesn't get busted up. Juan Manuel Marquez, on the other hand, all lumped up, all swollen. I mean, you look at these two guys, and you said he's up one guy's landed in the heart of shots. I don't know why. This fight is about as close as it can be. But Beers of Barrera getting off first. I think that's doing a lot of good for him in the eyes of the judges. They always like the aggressor, and Barrera does get off first constantly, landing a lot of good left hooks. Four to two, Barrera. The card of four to two, Marquez, would in no way be a surprise. Official ringside scores, as we've mentioned before, with a difficult job tonight. Two great tacticians, two great adjusters, two aggressive fighters in the ring. Stop! Manny, this must remind you of some great fights from the 50s and 60s. Oh, yeah, I'm saying just the tension being in the corner with one of these guys, you know, knowing that the fight is up in the air, and, you know, and it's going to probably stay this way all the way to the last round. I don't think no one's going to get a real comfortable decided edge. Oh, right, right, right hand, hand by Marquez. Yeah, yeah, Momentarily right. stones Barrera. Barrera trying to show that instinct for fighting yeah. back. That was the most eye-catching yeah. shot of the night. Another big uppercut for Marquez. Snaps Barrera's head back. And a big right hand over the top. Marquez seizing the advantage in the center of the ring. That's the punch that I said earlier that he had to watch out for. Because Marquez has been, been really gambling on that punch all night big long. Big left hook for Marquez. Suddenly, he's beating Barrera to the punch over and over and over. A spectacular rally for Juan Manuel Marquez punctuates the seventh round. Uppercut for Marquez. Left hook. Barrera stunned and in trouble. Bobbles back against the rope. Marquez looking to knock his man out. Brilliantly mixes in a couple of body shots. Barrera comes back with the left hand. The right hand from Barrera moves. Marquez often for a moment. But he's still letting the rear bottom for that right hand again. Herrera in more trouble than he's he, been in he, against anybody else against Manny Pacquiao seriously. in the course of the past several years. You wonder if he makes it out of the round. Herrera wobbly on his feet, trying to mix aggression with defense in such a way as to make it out. Juan Manuel Marquez scraped him with a series of power shots. And Barrera comes back with a right hand. And knocks Marquez down. Amazing. In a round that was almost 10-8, Marquez, Barrera scores the knockdown. Wait, but Jay Nady, Jay Nady may have called it a not a knockdown. That would be wrong. Point. And now he's penalizing Barrera for hitting him while he's down. But was it a knockdown? He signaled that it wasn't a knockdown. No, no. That's incredible. I don't think it was a knockdown. You don't think it was a knockdown? I don't know. I don't think it was a knockdown, but he, he penalized, I think, Marquez, for, I mean, Barrera for trying to hit him, trying he, to hit him. But did he even hit him? That's we'll what, have to that's look what at the I would replays. like to see. I, I a, was missed. it a knockdown? And Here's the right hand that hurts Barrera so badly. And he's been... Here's the end of the round. Right, right on the right, chin. Right hand. It was a right. How could that not be a knockdown? That's a knockdown. That is a perfect knockdown. He hit him with a perfect right hand shot, and his knee went to the canvas. That was a knockdown. And if it's not ruled a knockdown, that's a terrible error. And he took away a point when, in fact, it should have been a knockdown. A horrible error. Penalizes Barrera and, and Jay, and Jay Nady was in perfect position to see it. How could he have missed that shot? So in all likelihood, it becomes a 10-8 round for Marquez. 
and it could have been at least a 9-9 or maybe even a 10-9 for Barrera. It was a landslide in CompuBox where Marquez landed 33 out of 48 to only 11 of 29 for Barrera. And if it's a close decision for Marquez, that ruling is going to figure in. Both of these guys are fighting with so much determination. And, you know, Marquez still is in a good position, I think, to land that right hand still. Goes. There's a cut over yeah. uh, Juan Manuel Marquez's left eye. And I thought I saw some blood on Barrera at the end of the round, too, which wouldn't have been surprising. Big uppercut lands for Marquez. Suddenly, Barrera has no way to solve Marquez's power punching. Well, he normally well, he saw that in the last round with a right hand that knocked him down. Yeah, and he, he didn't get credit for didn't it. Didn't get credit for an obvious knockdown. You don't want to see a fight like this determined by a referee's mistake. Let's see how it plays out. Barrera's getting to be round, really tough, right? Just like he did with Hamid. Now he's going to be real rough and low down now. In the state of New Jersey, they are now using instant replay so that a decision like that can be reviewed and sorted out. If they had instant replay here tonight, Jay Nady might have been ruling a knockdown for Barrera. Excellent right point, Jim. Right. Great right hand. What a great fight. Suddenly, we've got a war in there. Well, There's man, no more technical boxing match tonight. Emmanuel, you called it earlier. You said that eventually it would have to come to this when the fighters realized it was so close they couldn't count on winning by points. But right now, even though it's close, it's still the better better watch out for Marquez's right hand. He's, he's getting so close now that he can't roll the right hand for Marquez the way that he was when he was fresher. And that's still a big danger of him getting caught with the right hand. And as you can see, Marquez is mixing up the right hands over top with right uppercuts. Stop! The drama of the seventh round spills over into the eighth. And now you can almost feel the crowd getting momentary break as Marco Antonio Barrera continues to try to even the score and get back what he lost in the seventh round. If I'm Larry Hazard of the New Jersey State Athletic Commission, I'm sitting at home tonight thinking, I'm glad my state has instant replay, so a mistake like what you're about to look at does not stand. Let's take another look at the knockdown, which Jay, Rady, Jay Nady ruled not a knockdown. Boom! Perfect right hand shot. Down goes Marquez. That's a knockdown. That's definitely a knockdown, and it can maybe be a big factor in the, if this fight goes to a decision, too. Particularly when it wound up being a penalty point against Marco Antonio Barrera. What the justification is for that, I have no idea. Well, he did hit him when he was down, Jim. Uh, oh, yes, Jay Nady right. was right. He hit him with a shot on top of the head. Yep, that's right. And okay, he so was that, correct. that point can be made. All right. But it would have been a point to his advantage, two-point round with the knockdown. So correct. that's still a big factor. Although that, it was that's a round a, in which Marquez was on the verge yeah, of the eight round. But anyway. That's a two or three point swing in the scoring. <laughs> and this looks, this fight doesn't look like it's going to be more than two or three points between them if it goes the distance. Copy box numbers through round eight. Barrera 180 out of 464, 39%. Marquez 185 out of 487, 38%. Barrera with an edge in jab connects. Marquez with an edge now in power shots, built up largely over the course of the past few rounds. Marquez's right eye appears to be closing. Right or left? The right. The left is puffed. The right is closing. And, and Barrera's starting to land right hands of his own now. He's trying to get in closer to punch Daniels. He's trying to get in with short punches right now. Instead of fighting at a distance, he's trying to get barrel in to get in closer and land with short punches now. They're fighting closely Just, enough yeah. now that their heads are flirting with each other from time to time. But you're right. Big left hook for Marquez. 
Vasquez, and Barrera comes back with a solid right hand shot. Barrera seems to be aware now that he's in a power punching war, and he's standing up a little bit better to Marquez's shots and landing his own. Like that. You spoke before the fight, Emmanuel, about the perception that Barrera is the older fighter because of all the wars he's been in, even though Marquez is chronologically a few months older. But he's not showing that tonight. What an upset it, it would it, be it, if it, Barrera it, could it. come back from what he suffered in the seventh round and stage a late rally. Well, he's doing it right now. He's, he's on his way to a victory the way it looks. If he continues to keep working the way he is, and in, in, in particular, seems like he's dictating the pace now. And Marquez is trying to figure out what Barrera is going to do for her. It was a little bit the other way around in the beginning. Barrera throwing Marquez into the ropes and hammering with the right hand. Meanwhile, Marquez has landed more power shots in the fight than ever before in his career. In other words, Juan Manuel Marquez may be fighting the fight of his life and may lose anyway. He may lose still. Well, that three-point swing is a huge swing. There's no reason not to use instant replay in this sport now. Every other sport enhances itself no, no, no. with electronic coverage. Body shots by Marquez and a big right hand upstairs. Barrera comes back with a flurry of his own and ducks the big left hook. Doubtful that Marquez has ever looked this way at the, end of a, at the end of a fight, much less at this stage. And that shows how Barrera's defense is so good, the fact that he's looked like he's going to get hit, but he hasn't been hit that solid. Coming up next, live boxing from Copenhagen, Denmark. Mikkel Kessler defends his 168-pound title against Librato Andrade. <laughs> Ya lo tienes dominado. Hace rato está, se agotó el cabrón y ya no lo seguiste. Pinches de rechazos en la barriga, Juan. Apuéstale todo ahí. No Vamos, de gira. Look at that CompuBox graphic. Just check that out. That looks like a tennis match statistic. Equal number of punches thrown, one punch difference in the number of punches landed. Incredible. Through nine rounds. Right here, you see Barrera coming back with right hands of his own now. He's becoming much more aggressive and trying to get very close because, for whatever reason, a lot of Marquez's punches have a lot of loop in them now as he's getting tired going down the stretch. It's doubtful that Marquez has ever been in a battle like this. We know Barrera has been. Power shots in round nine. Barrera 15 out of 32. Marquez 13 out of 35. Again, through nine rounds, they've thrown an equal number of punches, and they differ by one in the number of punches landed. Marquez lands a big right hand. They rally in the center of the ring. Harold, very quickly, your card through nine. Okay, Jim, 86, 84, six rounds to three. Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I got to tell you, I still think the judges are going to be impressed by the fact that Barrera gets off first. When he does that, if they see it, he lands the cleanest shots, and that's what he's winning it on. The couple more quick cleanest shots. Six to three, Barrera. And now there's blood around the left eye of Marco Antonio Barrera. No doubt the result of a right hand by Marquez. So both fighters are bloodied around the eyes. There's one thing, is not too many butts uh, being uh, in this entire fight. Most whatever happens is usually from punches. There's not too many head clashes at all. Series of body shots by Marquez, followed by an attempt upstairs. Marquez has been the aggressor again in the first minute of round number 10. And gets in a big right hand to the mouth of Barrera. Raping Barrera with body shots and uppercuts. Suddenly it looks like round seven again, as Barrera is the slower of the two, and Marquez is landing his power shots. He's that uppercut yeah. is really bedeviling Marco. Well, he's anticipating Barrera to move his head down when he gets inside, and now he's shooting the uppercuts. That's on anticipation of where Barrera's head's going to be at. Barrera starts to go to the right-hand lead, a tactic not previously used, using the straight right to try to set up his left hook. Barrera after 
the two jabs. Big round for Marquez. Herrera a little slow with his hands and missing in this round. Each round seems to be switching back and forth as the fight goes on. Now Barrera gets in a left hook. Ducks a right hand. Marquez mostly reaching there, but he's landed earlier in the round. Solid right hand by Barrera. Momentarily knocks Marquez off balance. Barrera gets in a little left hand uppercut. Marquez tries his uppercut again. Leaping with the left hook. Barrera fires his own left hook and lands it twice. Ten seconds to go in the round. See if Barrera throws in a late rally. They trade shots at the center of the ring. Wow. We are back at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles <laughs> where these kind of fights once were routine. April 15, it's the premiere of Deloy and Mayweather 24-7. It's a four-episode series featuring exclusive behind-the-scenes access to both fighters as they prepare in training camp for the big fight. May 5, it's the live pay-per-view fight. Deloy versus Mayweather. Don't miss out. Come on, but don't go, don't go against the ropes. That's where he catches you. Don't let him take you to the ropes. All right, that's it. One, two, one, two. Here you see Marquez landing the right hand, but you notice he threw a left hook before he threw the right hand this time, and that kind of distorted Barrera's body, because normally if you throw a one, two, you can't hit Barrera with it. A largely swollen Juan Manuel Marquez steps in against an increasingly swollen Marco Antonio Barrera. The fight tightens up on Harold Letterman's card after Marquez clearly won the 10. Once again, Harold's card reflects in the seventh round the way Jay Nady ruled it. No knockdown for Barrera, deduction of a point from Barrera, therefore a 10-8 round for Marquez. It had been a huge Marquez round up to the moment of the knockdown against him. Not ruled a knockdown, but which replays showed clearly was. Tactical action only in the first minute of round 11. Now Barrera tries to step up the pace. You know, yesterday you predicted that this fight had all the possibilities of it up being a draw. And seemingly you were very right with that, except maybe based on that scoring Big situation. left hook by Marquez. Back comes Barrera. My feeling was you've got two fighters who can adjust from round to round. Why wouldn't it be a seesaw battle? Why wouldn't it be largely even? When was there ever a better chance for a draw? Seems to me 11 rounds ago I called for a rematch. <laughs> <laughs> Contact there for Marquez. Barrera landed to the body. Marquez landed upstairs. Now Marquez tries to go to the body, and Barrera, for one of the few times all night, ties him up. Jane 80 warns Barrera about holding behind the head. Good, solid left hook to the body by Barrera. Stops Marquez in his tracks. Whatever the outcome of this fight, from Marquez's point of view, he is showing everybody why insiders in boxing experts have always considered him in the class of the top featherweights and 130-pounders of his time. He's showing that he certainly belonged in the discussion right there with Barrera and Morales and Pacquiao. No question about it. As I said earlier, if I was having Barrera, this is the last guy in the world that I was going to fight. And it's why I wouldn't let him Nassim Hamed box him. When I, when well, I, I started to say, him. when you were training yeah. Prince Nassim yeah. Hamed, he openly ducked Marquez for right. two years. 
He's always to be the, maybe the best featherweight in the world, just not normal. Even when we had the big thing with Morales and him, I thought he should have been right up there with Guerrero and Morales. Both fighters trying to make statements for the judges in the last 30 seconds of round 11. Which one would you choose? Hey, Rafi, hit him with the head. Look, it's a headbutt. Come on. Where's the Vaseline? Where's the Vaseline for the cuts? Oh, man. This is the last round. This is the last round. Come on. Come on, he hit him. Come on, he hit him. Don't hold your punches. Let them go. Yeah. Oh, we got it. Come on, breathe. We're gonna rent this round. We're gonna rent this round. It's close. We're gonna rent this round. And close your defense. Close your defense. We, we just saw the sign put up that a cut was caused by a punch. So was the knockdown. <laughs> as the 12th round begins in Las Vegas. Big left hook by Marquez to start off the round. Hey, both fighters at the corner realize that the fight in their man could possibly be determined by the winner of this round here. So there's probably going to be a lot of action in this last round. And the, the cut outside Juan Manuel Marquez's right eye is big enough now to be bothersome. And to show the blood that might help scorers to lean in one direction, if Barrera can make it stick. Barrera popping little punches inside the storm. Marquez trying to land something big. Now the blood begins to flow outside Marquez's right eye. Barrera got in a little left hand, enough to open it back up and make it bleed. Marquez trying to get a right hand across the top. The drama intensifies with two minutes to go. Now you may see Barrera's experience pay through this last round because he knows how to box it. When he gets his floater going, he can put together combinations so beautiful and be moving all at the same time while he's punching. Barrera right. jab, jab, jab. Throws a little right hand. Jabs and beats Marquez to the punch. Marquez lands the left hook. Barrera backs him off with a right hand. Big left hook for Marquez. Barrera lands the right. Trading punches down the stretch. Another big left hook for Marquez. Barrera momentarily ties him up. Don't hold his head down. Stop! In the second half of the fight, Marco Antonio Barrera seems to show a little bit of the wear and tear from his long and difficult career. Marquez shows his tremendous desire to finally win a big fight. Barrera comes back and strafes him with a left hook. Takes a left hook on the chin. Hits him back with one of his own. This is one of those fights, I hate to say it, I wish I could hear three more rounds in the 15. Back in the day. Back in the day. Tony DeMarco and Carmen Basilio. This is a great fight here. Punches are just so accurate. It has lived up to its expectations. And perhaps exceeded them. Yeah. Barrera lands a left hook and steps away. Hard right hand for Barrera. Marquez fighting through the flowing blood. Ten seconds to go. Who will rally last? Barrera lands two shots. Marquez tries again. Barrera with a right hand. Big left hook for Marquez. And the bell ends the drama. What a fight. What a confrontation. What let's, a glorious tribute to Mexican fighting. Let's do it again. <laughs> what a challenge to the scorers. I had Marquez winning by a point. Which means that the knockdown had been ruled correctly, you had a draw. And you see the tributes on both sides as the members of Marquez's camp are hugging Barrera. 
and the members of Barrera's camp are trading pleasantries with Marquez. Here's the drama in round seven. First, Marquez hurts Barrera and hurts him badly with power shots in the middle of the ring. It looks for a while as though Barrera might not make it out of the round. He wobbles back against the ropes, put into position to perhaps suffer a knockdown. And then, with a perfect right-hand shot, he knocks Marquez to the canvas, then steps forward and takes a shot at Marquez's head. Jay Nady, the referee, rules, first of all, no knockdown, clearly incorrect. And then, correctly, takes away a point from Barrera for taking a shot at Marquez's head. So there's a one-point discrepancy between what Nady actually ruled and what reality ought to be. And let's go to Michael Buffer to find out if that one point decided something. Here are the scores. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, before we go to the scorecards, a round of applause for these two warriors in the ring here tonight. The judges' scorecards are as follows. Doug Tucker, 118-109. Patricia Morris-Jarman, 116-111. Paul Smith, 116-111. To the winner, by unanimous decision, and new WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez. All three judges preferring the power punching of Marquez. And the knockdown becomes a tempest in a teapot as it affected nothing whatsoever. All of our complaining about the knockdown ruling stands for nothing because in the end, the judges saw a relatively one-sided victory for Marquez over Barrera. And Larry stands by with the man the judges deemed the clear and unequivocal winner of the fight, Juan Manuel Marquez. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Juan Manuel. What does this fight mean to you? You know, this fight is very important for me. I say in the first press conference, this fight is a war. I, I say I ready to the war. I, I win the fight, and uh, congratulations to Barrera. He's a great fighter. You are very marked up. You fought a, a brawl, a tough brawl. Have you ever been in a fight like this before? Yes, hey, this fight, every round, every round it's a war. Uh, uh, every round I win the fight. Every round I win, I win round. In the seventh round, you went down. The referee ruled that it was not a knockdown. But you must know what we know from watching the replay, that he hit you on the chin and that it was a knockdown. Let's take a look at the monitor if we can get it up here. All right, you saw, yes. you, it was, you thought it was a knockdown? Okay, me sentí, yo si me conecto, yo estaba bien. No, me conectó, fue un golpe de rozón en la mandíbula, me conectó, pero yo me, me sentí bien nada más que me pegó abajo en el piso. Yes, he did, he did connect me. He punched me, it was a glancing punch, but he did hit me when I was down also. Do you think there should be a rematch? Yes, 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 I think. Marco Barrera is very, very, very aggressive fight. And uh, yes, yes, I, 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 want a, I want a rematch. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Juan thank Manuel. You, thank you. Marco Antonio, congratulations on an outstanding fight. You were not able to be as aggressive as you hoped you could be. Why? Well, it's because I, I move all the time. I I feel that I'm very fast. I do my better job. But I think so. I do it necessary for win this fight. I don't know what happened with the judges. So you felt that you were able to box him in the early rounds and so there wasn't necessary for you to become aggressive. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Wait, we we fight the two. I boxing, I I throw punches, but 
I hit him and he he not come out. He down. Yes. Never never change the referee. All right. Maybe we will show that knockdown again, and you tell us what you think if we can show it. Yeah. Look look the hand. Look look the hand. Look. He down, and the referee they say nothing. Look did, look that. Did you know? Because the referee the referee never touched me, and he but. <coughs> All right, but I, you, I never, you, you hit him when he was down, however. No, no, the, the, I, yes, I hit, but never, never talked. All right, did, the, did you realize that the referee had called it not a knockdown? Exactly, and... and did you know that? Yeah, I, da uh, wow. Robert Marquez down, and never changed, never con a count. Did that influence you in the fight? Did you think... I got a knockdown, but I wasn't credited with it, and did it yes, discourage I so. you? I think so, the referee, and I don't know what happened. It's the second time that did my fight. Uh, Juan Manuel Marquez hit me here and never caught a pound, and hit, hit down, and never, I don't know what happened with the referee. All right, you said before the fight, this is your last year as a fighter. Yes. You also said or hinted that if this, that this could be your last fight. After this, is this your last fight or do you want a rematch? I don't know, I don't know. I, now I got to take my vacation with my kids, with my wife, with my family. I'm going to think, I got to think about because now I think so bad judges, a bad referee. I don't know, I got to think because I don't need necessary, I win, I win. I don't know what happened in the men, in the men and the judges. So doesn't that make you feel that you should fight him again? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I go to, to take my vacation, I go to think, maybe, I don't know, maybe in this time I say bye-bye, uh, golden boy. I don't know, I don't know, I go to think about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right, now I'm with uh, Keith Kaiser, the chairman of the, the, the director of the commission. Keith, was, as you know, in New Jersey, they have instant replay for this sort of situation. It was a clear punch, a clear knockdown. The referee missed it. Will you consider putting in instant replay for such things? Well, instant replay is something that we've, we've thought about for years. We're going to look closely at what happens in New Jersey in the, uh, with their uh, trial period on it, and anything's possible. With, with technology uh, improving by leaps and bounds every day in this world, that's always a possibility. If this had been a very close fight uh, by the judges' scorecard, that knockdown or non-knockdown would have made the difference. Doesn't that say something to you about not just we'll see, but we should take a hard look at implementing it? Right. No, no, and we have done that, and it's a situation where you got to look at whether that takes away from the uh, traditional aspects of the sport. Um, you know, football was slow to get instant replay. It's worked for them, though there are certain things that they don't allow instant replay on. Boxing might be a situation there. Um, it, it's always a possibility. Possible Thank you very much, Thank Keith. You, Just this final word. You know, in every decade or generation of fighters, there are fights that for one reason or another didn't happen. I'm thinking of the great Sugar Ray Leonard and Aaron Pryor, a fight that could have been a fight that we would still be talking about if it had happened before Ray Leonard injured his eye. In the 90s, it might have been Riddick Bowe against uh, Mike Tyson or Riddick Bowe against Lennox, against Lennox Lewis. This is a fight that almost didn't happen. It did happen, and we're sure glad it did. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry, and uh, our thanks to Keith Kaiser, the uh, executive director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, for making himself available to talk about that situation. Manny, uh, when you look at the three judges' scorecards, and of course their view of the fight differed dramatically from ours, um, it's perhaps most interesting that the least experienced judge, Doug Tucker, found only two rounds in the whole fight to give to Marco Antonio Barrera. But there's always been a reputation that Las Vegas judges favor aggression. Uh, Juan Manuel Marquez was throwing more power punches clearly in the second half of the fight. Uh, do you think that was what was at play in the thinking that led to these unusually lopsided scores? I'm not going to stress my brain trying to figure out and sort out these decisions that I'm seeing now. So it, 
I have a lot of other things I can deal with. I mean, I'm just totally confused. It, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. I thought that the rare for ring generalship uh, and everything else was in the fight. Uh, the knockdown was, wasn't scored, but still, all, all in that combined just does not make any sense to me how you can come up with scores as if he didn't, he wasn't even in the fight. Yeah, I but mean, there's I no saw, injustice, yeah, of yes, course, no. in a win for Marquez because clearly he's in the fight all the way. He yeah. you know, has every chance to win the fight, and there's, there's certainly no injustice in choosing Marquez over Barrera in a fight like this. The question is just how could the scores fact, have been I, so one-sided? I thought it, it would have made it been the other way, just this legendary great fighter who's been through all of these great fights, been fighting professional since he was 15 years old, has given of so many great fights here in Las Vegas, and particularly here, where most of his great fights are. And I thought if any edge of a bit, it would have been for him. And, you know, instead of being totally against him, it just like it was just the opposite. And with the knockdown not being scored, even though he hit the guy down, you know, a lot of times in the heat of battle, athletes are all mad, all angry, and sometimes they really can't tell completely whether the guy's touching the floor or not. And so, you know, so there's a benefit to that. And I, I saw that happen, but to act as if he didn't win over one just two rounds. I mean, it's, it's no way in the world I can justify that. I try Maybe to it removes a little, but not all that much of the satisfaction from what was truly a great fight, great combat, great intelligent, spirited combat between two tremendous fighters. All right, let's look ahead to what's coming up in the future on HBO and HBO Pay-Per-View. March 24, Boxing After Dark is back with Mikkel Kessler defending his 168-pound title against Librado Andrade from Copenhagen, Denmark. April 7, the other 168-pound champ, Joe Calzaki, takes on Peter Manfredo from his hometown, Card of Wales. Kessler in his hometown, Calzaki in his. Starting April 15, it's the premiere of Delaware Oye Mayweather 24-7, a four-episode series featuring behind-the-scenes access to both superstars as they prepare for their big Big night. May 5, it's the live pay-per-view fight. Oscar De La Hoya versus Floyd Mayweather, the biggest boxing event of 2007. For all that and more, log on to HBO.com. And we want to pay special attention to the debut of this unusual new program, De La Hoya Mayweather 24-7. Their 12-city promotional tour ended tumultuously with some emotional confrontations between the two fighters. Floyd Mayweather theatrically pulling out a live chicken in Los Angeles with an Olympic gold medal around its neck. And the supposition on the part of many is that if Oscar De La Hoya had no enormously powerful negative emotional feeling about Floyd Mayweather before the tour, maybe that's different now. Joining us now is Oscar's longtime good friend, two-time conqueror and business partner, Shane Mosley. Shane, uh, we're going to get ready to go inside the training camps of these two fighters as they get ready to fight each other. You've been in training camps all your life. What are viewers going to learn and see about the fighters that they might not have known before from the experience of being inside? Well, I think that uh, they'll get a chance to see how they, uh, their, their demeanor is when they're, um, you know, when they're working out and training. Uh, if they're you know, a little cranky or not, uh, like to be around people, don't like to be around people, want to be to themselves more. So they'll get a chance to see, um, you know, the life of a boxer. Do you think there's a lot of idiosyncrasy here? I mean, is, is every fighter's training camp different from anybody else's in your judgment and experience? I think so. I think that when they see Floyd's training camp and the way he, uh, he acts or carries on and the way Oscar acts and carries on in his training camp, it's probably going to be totally different. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see for me. <laughs> you proved last month with your performance against Luis Calazzo here that you're still one of the very top fighters in the sport, as athletic and gifted as any fighter who's fought in the last 20 years. And now, amazingly, you're planning to go to Puerto Rico as of April 1 and spend, I'm told, three weeks working as a sparring partner for your buddy Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, everybody sees this as a great advantage for Oscar. It's also seen as being unprecedented in the sport. What's your reasoning and what do you think you can do for Oscar down there? Well, my reasoning for going out there definitely is that, you know, I like, I like to stay in the gym anyway. I spar a lot of the kids around in New York or California or wherever. Uh, Cal so the reason is to help Oscar to be the best he possibly can be in the fight. I'm the most, I'm the only guy that's probably as quick as Floyd and uh, maybe can give him that, that type of look, um, the same height. And I think that it'll be, uh, it'll be good for Oscar. It'll be good for me too because I'm definitely going to keep myself in shape as well. It's not just that you're athletic and quick like Floyd. You're also, in our experience, the greatest imitator of fighters we've seen. I mean, this is kind of a, a specialty of yours to mimic what other fighters do. I'm sure you're going to tell me that you have Floyd Mayweather down. Well, yeah, I have a few of his moves down. But, you know, I still got to watch a lot more tapes um, to see exactly everything that he does. I mean, you know, you, you can mimic him, mimic him to a certain degree, but, you know, there's still a lot. I'm not, I'm not the original copy. I'm just, you know, a duplicate for that, for that moment. And uh, hopefully I can do the best to make Oscar... Uh, to win the fight. 
Whatever it is that Shane picks up and chooses to do, you're going to see some of it in Delaware and Mayweather 24-7. What a spectacular idea it is. Delaware Mayweather 24-7 premieres Sunday, April 15th, and it will air every Sunday night at 10.30 Eastern and Pacific time after Sopranos and Entourage. Then it will climax with a final episode on Thursday, May 3 at 9.30 Eastern and Pacific time. Delaware Mayweather 24-7 leads you up to the big 